guess what we got here today? Oh yeah, an infamous, very infamous, but yet popular ESP LTD M1000 Deluxe. Now, give you a quick little uh, view of it here. Dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. Now, I'm a huge fan of ESP guitars. Uh, this is probably the first time I've actually done a review on this, but initially, I wanted to have this long term before I even considered it. Uh, so I've had this for probably about a year, no, closer to a year and a half actually. And uh, it's it's great with a couple of quirks that are not so great, uh, but that's something I'll get into in just a minute here. Um, I'm going to be playing this through the Blackstar TVP ID260. Uh, this has the EMG 57 and 66 TWs uh, pickups. All right. So what that means for those of you who are not familiar with the TWs or have been living under the rock, a rock for the last however many years, uh, the TWs have the split function. So the push pull volume tone knobs, tone volume push pull for the bridge, push pull volume or excuse me tone knob bridge volume knob uh, neck. <laughs> and uh, what it does is it it splits is coil split. It's coil split. It's like changing it from humbucker to single coil. All right. Uh, body is an alder. This is an alder body with a three-piece maple neck and a Macassar. Is that how you pronounce it? Sure. Macassar fretboard. Um, this is kind of a standard for a lot of the mid-model to somewhat mid-high model guitar uh, guitars in the industry. Um, so you can't really get better than that. I mean, even custom shot guitars, you know, the wood when it's electric guitar or solid body. Um, going from this to a custom shop with, you know, mahogany or whatever, um, not going to hear a lot of difference. So other than the fact that it's probably going to be heavier. <laughs> All right. Uh, bridge. Floyd Rose Bridge. So uh, I'm sure you guys have heard me complain about my Schecter Damien Platinum FR, how the bridge is actually a Floyd Rose Special. Basically, the Floyd Rose Special is a cheap version of what Floyd Rose makes. So it's not a license, meaning that it's not, you know, made from another company. It's still made from Floyd Rose, but uh, it has its quirks. It's, you know, a lot of the parts are made out of zinc, so they don't, they, they bend and they move when they shouldn't. You know, certain parts like the saddles, uh, for an example. So no matter what you have for springs on it, it, it seemed to never, it always seems like it never goes back into it. So anyway, this is a Floyd Rose 1000 series, which a lot of people, just to, just to clarify, a lot of people th seem to think that the Floyd Rose 1000s are not as good as the actual Floyd Rose original that you can get off of Floyd Rose website. I disagree, 100%, I disagree. I think that the, the 1000 series and the 1500 series are one of two of the most uh, of the best Floyd Rose you can get. All right. Yeah, you've got some other ones that are, you know, pure titanium and, you know, they'll stay in tune better than pretty much anything else. But they're also like $700. So, you know, you kind of have to balance price point with quality. And I think the Floyd Rose 1000 series and the 1500 series are where that balance is perfect. For me personally, not a huge fan of the of the of the stick in uh, chamola bar, whammy bar, um, but it's something I've sort of gotten used to, um, with with varying exceptions. Three select, three select, three way selector. All right, and uh, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and play some demos. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot over to Clean Channel real quick, if I can find it. I think that's clean. All right. So for clean sounds, the pickups, even even just being on the bridge, it's really warm. It's it's organic. Sounds really good, especially for an active pickup. Uh, let's go. Let's stay on the bridge. I'm gonna do the uh, coil coil tap. All right. Actually, I'll do the. I'll show you the differences here. All right. 
right, so is it exactly like a, like a single coil? No, but it's pretty close. Same one. Let's keep it in humbucker mode and I'm going to go to bridge and neck. Now if you want to do single coil mode using both pickups, you're going to have to pop both of the controls out, both of the knobs. All right, neck pickup only, coil split. So there definitely is a little bit of volume drop when you use the uh, the coil tap for either you know either pickup, um, which is the one thing that of of all brands Fishman is actually has kind of stopped all over. Um, you know Fishman pickups they came out with a third voicing I forget what it's called it's. I can't remember if they renamed the pickup or, or just renamed the third voicing, but the idea was is that they made a single coil uh, coil tap on a humbucker where you put it when you, when you engage coil tap mode, uh, the volume doesn't change at all. So kind of cool. Be nice if EMG does the same thing with their TWs without having to change the connectors. Um, that'd be great. It would be a simple swap. All right, and I'm just, I'm mainly just doing clean and high gain. So we're gonna go straight to high gain. I did not check my tuning at all. So definitely more a PAF, uh, PAF style uh, pickup compared to the ceramic, you know, classic, you know, EMG 81s or 85s or uh, whatever. Um, my, my, biggest, my biggest gripe with these pickups is more so the bridge pickup. The biggest, biggest gripe with the 57 is also the same reason that I like it, is that it's, very, it's a little more open, it's not as compressed, it's organic, and it's very musical which is also my problem with it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I, I played this guitar through tube amps, high gain tube amps, you know, and solid state amps. And then I also tried the hybrid amps, you know, that have like the two, you know, the hybrid power section uh, or the solid state power section, like the Joyo Zombie. And 
I made a video on this, but you can't really tell in the video, so that's why I didn't post it. But one thing I noticed is that with hybrid amps, whether it's the Joyo Zombie, the Marshall Valve State that I tried, and there was another one that I tried in the studio uh, last year. I can't remember what it was. All three of them did not like this pickup, this bridge pickup. It, it, it was almost like it, it was creating more noise. And I, I tried to make a video of it. I, I swear I tried. I tried to, to really point it out, and you just couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear it, so I didn't post it. But in person, it was there. It was like this extra noise while I was playing that I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was almost like there was an extra, I don't know, like five, 600K uh, giga, kilohertz, hertz, whatever, um, that, was, that was kind of shining through, and it was annoying. It was annoying. But then, you know, I plug it into my stealth, and it sounds great, you know, with the exception of, you know, a more... PAF style attack. Um, so what I may end up doing is actually I might swap out the 57 for an EMG 51 TW um, just because I do like the coil tap and because it's the TWs are the seven pin. They're not the three pin like the regular EMG, you know, 81s or 57s, um, which kind of sucks because that also limits what you can put in here. All right. So you can't, you can't, I can't swap this out from a 57 TW to an 81X, unless it's an XTW, all right? So the limit, so, so, and the other thing is if I wanted to swap a brand, I couldn't just pull this out and put a, a Seymour Duncan blackout in it because Seymour Duncan blackouts, for you guys that don't know, they are also three pin are, and are interchangeable with standard EMG pickups, but not the TWs. <laughs> That's the only thing that sucks. So, all right, let's, let's, I'm gonna play a little more here. So right off the bat, you probably tell pinch harmonics don't come through as well as the classic, you know, EMG 81s, you know, for the ceramics. And, um, you know, sometimes it bothers me. Other times, if I know that I have to put a little more effort into it, it comes out fine. They sound good, whatever. Uh, but it's just something to be aware of. And, uh, you know, aside from that, aside from the small nitpicking things I'm talking about, like with the pickup, um, Aside, yeah, I mean, aside from that, this is a great guitar. It stays in tune like a boss. You know, it's uh, it's full neck through, neck through construction. You know, that is not painted on the back, which is a huge plus. Huge plus. The only, um, you know, if you if you were to take this and pit it up against a Schecter equivalent, it would be it would be the Schecter Hellraiser Hybrid FR. 
same bridge, same pickups. And uh, even though the neck is painted on the back with the Schechter, it's a, it's a satin, kind of like the, you know, the other Platinum series where it's not all glossy and sticky. Um, so that would, be, that would be the only other guitar that I could compare this to would be the, the Hellraiser Hybrid. Because um, the Hellraiser Hybrid is a, is a fantastic guitar, but it does use the same pickups. And I think they're TWs on those too. I, I believe so. Um, again, I, I mentioned the Floyd Rose 1000 series and 1500 series. This thing stays in tune like a boss. I mean, it really does. <laughs> Good guitar. Uh, do I recommend it for the price? Okay, so with inflation right now, they're selling at about $1,500. Do I recommend it as a $1,500 guitar? No, I do not. I say if you're going to find one of these, look for a lightly used one. Because a lightly used one, you can get it for nine, maybe a thousand bucks. And uh, to me, that makes it worth, worthwhile uh, because the price point especially with, with, like I said, the pickup. If you're gonna swap out the pickup, you're gonna spend an extra like, what, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. Um, so I think this is a very good guitar for anywhere between eight to $1,200. So if you can find a used one under 1,200, I'd say buy, absolutely. If you have the funds, go for it, because you can't go wrong. And even if you don't end up liking the pickup at that price, it's still worth swapping the pickup out, out 100%. Uh. <laughs> So that's my overall review. Sorry it took me so long to make the video. Um, but if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, let me know. And uh, we'll go from there.